is I'm the leader of Open Office Org Spanish, which is um, basically well in Open Office we we don't have national chapters we have language chapters and I'm from the Spanish uh, team. So I've been working with Open Office since uh, 2002, I think. So I've been around uh, in the project, and in the meantime, I had the chance to participate and lead the many projects, including um, the Spanish one, the education track, the business development track, and certification tracks um, or projects. Um, then again, the uh, the one that I've been with the most is uh, the Spanish project. Um, I've been there since uh, leading the project since 2004. And um, I've seen open office and open source evolve, um, seeing what is good about it and also what are their shortcomings. Um, I've been able to talk with uh, many people, developers uh, come to me in all these conferences and uh, they ask, and also, you know, implementers and clients, potential clients that want to adopt the technology and uh, they ask me for different things that they don't see in the open source world that they are used to in the business world. Things like, uh, let's say, um, practices, standard practices, certification de on development, uh, support contracts, uh, partnership networks, and different things that um, they are very common in, in the business world. Um, so that's, um, as, as I talk with the community and I see that some people in the community were entrepreneurs, they actually want to start a business and dedicate their living to um, the cause of, of spreading and implementing open office. They possess some expertise. Uh, and also, on the other side, I saw um, technology people that already uh, are CEOs of the company or they have a small consulting to want to implement open office within their services, um, we start talking and we start saying, well, we really need to um, lead a project of professional services. Back then, usually what we said is like, well, we provide the software and then it's up to you to provide the layers on top of it, like the services, the support, the training, the documentation, etc. But uh, being let's say when this project started uh, five years, uh, we didn't see any of this support, at least not on a very consolidated level. So we started um, saying, okay, we need to take the lead here. And we opened a strategy uh, which later became the initiative of Open for Business. And that's where Open for Business name is in. This is only available in, uh, this within the Spanish project um, it is my will in the future, especially if it's successful, um, to spread it throughout the project um, in some form, at least, uh, these initiatives. So, uh, first is the, well, this is why we're doing it. We've seen a lot of growth from Open Office. Uh, um, we had the adoption from governments in different parts of the Hispanic regions, uh, Latin America, Spain, uh, and other regions like Brazil, uh, anything in the EU. So we've seen the standardization and adoption, official adoption of the ODF format, which is also something that, um, that has pulled in open office into the conversation on many countries. Um, the incremental growth of Open Office 3.0, as when it was released, it was adopted, and mo uh, many large migration projects started as the new version came through. Uh, and we also start sharing corporate stories, sales stories, um, companies that tried to participate and they were uh, not able to go through the, docu the documentation because they lack 
um, a sponsoring company or maybe maybe the um, not maybe sorry uh, it wasn't the provider backing them up so for example a requirement for and I don't know if it's entirely legal but it came out like that um, a government contract they required that the companies that will participate in in the process uh, for the contract need to be um, need to have some kind of partnership with the with the vendor. In this case, there were many uh, Microsoft business partners or training partners, etc. And we didn't have well this company that wanted to participate with the open office offer. Offer they he couldn't claim that it was uh, let's say certified or partnered with open office because open office was not a vendor. Um, so those kind of stories also ignited to certain type of uh, partnership network that we started within open office, which I later will explain more. Also another thing is that as many migrations have concluded and come to become success stories, uh, it's already proven some of these benefits. So you now that you actually go and talk to a company, uh, the company is not going to, well, I mean, it might still be asking itself, but now he has a lot of references on other companies that had adopted successfully open office and had reached their saving goals, which is one of the main things that, uh, well, migrations are done for. They have achieved their target savings uh, for the project or for the migra migration, and that's usually something that now is documented, so it is, is better for the sales part. Now, this is one of the largest migrations. Um, yeah, this by the BR office team. Uh, Petrobras is around a $350 billion company, as far as Wikipedia says. Uh, it's pretty big, it's pretty large. It uh, has uh, a, a presence in about seven oceans, uh, which is uh, enormous. And they also have around um, a huge amount of desktops, and coming into doing a migration of 90,000 desktops, well, that brings a lot of unique challenges that uh, are things that will impress at least many corporate level companies. It says like, well, I mean, not that many companies have uh, that amount of desktops, and if they were successful and they reached their goals, it's a huge precedent for us to reuse. Now we have the Malaysian public sector. They have 458 agencies. Uh, they migrate them. I, don't, um, I think they're on stage three from what I think. Uh, so they haven't really completed all of them, but um, let's say around half of them at least are already mi migrated to open office. Now, um, things with the Malaysian public sector is not just a success story, but it also documented quite well and they develop strategies that are and, and techniques that are uh, good might be um, as we chat around we got consultants talking to each other might become a good practice and I think these are key business driven things that the open for business initiative is trying to achieve we're trying to get practices and maybe uh, training course for migrators where they can actually learn techniques on how to better face the uh, migrations and implementations of open office within a corporate environment. Um, we all have, we have um, unique um, cases there's a vertical industry where they have specific needs, where they rely on a proprietary software that is uh, basically industry standard, and um, they cannot uh, get off the loop of uh, using Microsoft Office because sometimes, for example, in the financial sector, it says, well, I mean, Excel is really not the big, I mean, we use it, but it's the, all these plugins that connect to our back, back office, which is really important. And, and Office is, is probably the cheapest software <laughs> in, my, in my computer. 
is all this integration with corporate level environments and, and, and mainframes and things like that, software running on mainframes that are the really expensive part. So I'm not saying that we can do that right now, but I'm saying that these are unique positions where we can learn a lot from um, a partnership network and from activities in the open for business environment. So first thing we need to understand, there's two type of people or two type of entities. One is the individual, which usually they read the documentation, although they don't, but they, they're more open to read the documentation. They participate on mailing lists and they can ask their questions in forums. They also can um, try new software and if it's good, it will stay in their computer and if it's not good, it will be deleted or forgotten and people are used to do that. People are used to trying new software they download off the internet. Uh, they don't have any challenges to, to do that. There's besides the technical ones that might disappear depending on the level of expertise from the user. And usually they're eager to um, modify the usage of the software. I'm not saying the code, I'm saying the practices. So you used your computer one way, three years later you're, doing, you're using your computer a completely different way because killer apps came into your life or whatever, or you just migrate to a laptop that usually you just use for uh, email while your desktop is used for design and photo editing or something like that. Organizations is a different species. Um, it's not an individual. We're talking about large networks and uh, many profiles of users. Um, some of them might not even be recognized by the same organization. They usually see it as a flat network, while in some other cases, well, they have actually different profiles. It's not the same comparing a designer of the company where with a uh, system administrator, with a secretary or administrative administrator, uh, I mean assistant. Um, so implementing software is, well, uh, they don't read manuals, they do training. They will hire a company to train on uh, them. They don't ask in forums, they usually take consulting. And they don't try to uh, use software just to try it out. They have to actually have a lot of discussions in meetings in the IT department and talk to management and then come to a decision of implementing and they do uh, 30 days, even sometimes the corporate software, the 30, the, uh, 30 days tryouts, they, they're, they're really not, they're really not uh, enough. They actually have to stick with the software and try to run it for a couple of months to see if they deliver the, the expected results in the company. So not all solutions are benefit to everybody. It's, you know, it's not a one fit all uh, situation. So uh, these are the organizational needs. Uh, classify the needs and solution channels. I'm going to explain a little bit more uh, about this. Um, they need to ratify that whoever is implementing this software uh, has the experience or at least the backing of a network which will deliver expertise. Um, they want, well, I'm not saying they want because that's putting words in their mouth, but I mean, it's usually better if you come up with a strategy or a, pro or a project or a plan where all their users become certified somehow and they have a level of expertise within the company. Uh, which will allow them to validate the competent competence in um, in the organization. Uh, oh, great! This is misspelled. The support uh, we do uh, focus on the partnership uh, pro program. Um, we cover this in. Uh, I'm sorry. So these are the needs that we came from the, our talks with the organization. Um, and these are usually the things that we identify from these talks with companies and organizations. And this is usually how we start channeling uh, these needs. And one was the certification, then the other one was the support, and then the other one was the implementation. And that became the services from education. It became a certification program that we're still not running, but it's in the works. Uh, a support program 
uh, or, um, or rather a partnership program where we can spread out support to a different t tiers and we can say, well, uh, open office uh, Spanish will give you a third level support and then the second level support will be entrusted to you because we're sending you the documentation and then a first level support, uh, first level support uh, you can train the, the, the staff within the company for these uh, matters. So uh, this partnership program focuses a lot on uh, making companies that maybe no, they don't have the infrastructure, they just have the, the wheel to include open office in their, in their, in their offerings. Uh, now they have documentation, quality documentation that is reviewed by people, by experts in the open office community, and we send it out to them. We also, right now, we'll start running webinars with experts that will give you or seminars that will give you uh, maybe two, three, four hours uh, of conversation on techniques on how to implement either migrations, trainings, or uh, sales. We do have implementation, on my, um, which is what we, as a unit, um, we, do, we offer to organizations, especially large ones, which is massive migrations when you have like something like the BR office case but it was 90,000 desktops. Uh, and we also offer a special package for universities that they want to include open office in the, in the organization. We not just cover um, the implementation, but also the training for trainers. So basically they will become, they will go out and become either programmers, trainers, or general experts in the, in the use and implementation of open office in other organizations. That way we will spread out the use of open office in, in the small businesses or large if they actually come to become that. So the question is can this community uh, and these uh, suits basically uh, come together and uh, great I didn't translate this slide but basically um, this is a unique thing because this is not a proprietary enterprise, so I suppose this is a, an open enterprise and how can we put our image or our, our, our beliefs or our values into ho this whole process. So now we have to be an open source kind of program in a environment that is um, usually exclusive. So if organizations come and sign uh, an agreement with us, or with rather other vendors, they will have to sign in an NDA, they will have to sign in a contract that will limit them to do this and this and this. You're only, I mean, this is a service that we're providing and we have insurance and we blah, 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 blah. So, but we're not the usual vendors. We're an open source organization. So we don't want to limit businesses that sign with us. Uh, we want uh, to, to have that open mentality so this is uh, something that we need to work out. Well, I will actually work it out, but uh, we, it, every time we have to make a decision on new services or how do we go about implementing a service within Open for Business, we need to put the values of, well, we need to be open, we need to be transparent, we, we need to help the, the business, but also help the costs. So if, for example, we give mentoring to you and and something great happens of that mentoring, or we work, work together to create an, an integration with an ERP, uh, yeah, with an ERP, and we decided, well, this is actually quite good. We need to open source it. So we need to, to improve the, or we need to improve the performance in open office. So these values need to, to, to benefit the, the open source uh, world, or the open office world, depending. Um, the community also, they feed on uh, the knowledge base, so we need to document that knowledge base. All these experiences that we come from these, uh, from these services, uh, they also need to eventually become open to the general public. Um, also companies, they can uh, update and, oh, what? <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> oh, okay, okay, this basically, uh, number three basically just said that if we have this uh, knowledge base, we want to open it, we want to publish it eventually, even if it's not in real time, 
uh, at the beginning maybe because they, they, the knowledge base might have some uh, private information that we don't want to, or the, the, the end client doesn't want to publish. Eventually, the, the good stuff, uh, the practices and, and, the, and the solutions will become open source and available to everybody else. Um, and yeah, just basically the feedback will be uh, from a private organization to a small, but then again, uh, concentrated office. So open office Spanish is, even though it kind of behaves like, like an organization, like a private entity, it's not. So we work together, we work every day, but at the same time, it's not a business unit. It's not, I mean, it's a community after all. So we're not, we don't have employees. So this is also a tricky situation because we cannot force them into giving something that we promise that we deliver. So it's a tricky situation that we always have to have in mind. We, we cannot, this is mostly for people within the project that has associated with themselves with the Open for Business Initiative. They have a moral contract, but they are not, I mean, we cannot force them into, obligate them into doing, which usually change the dynamics of how we engage with uh, an end client or a partner. And, and this is something that we also have to keep in mind if we want to work together with uh, um, either the partner or the enterprise in case that's the, the end client. Uh, this is another service. Uh, this is usually a service for uh, the education, academic packages. It's basically the mentorship and guidance um, where students, if, they, if, they, if you decide or if a university or a college decides to uh, get the the academic package. Um, some of the things that we will provide is that we will provide mentorship and guidance on the tracks over the, on the on the veins of open office development uh, for the people that wants to become a programmer. Uh, they will have access. Well, they, or everybody has access to the API, but now it will be mentor. Um, they also will participate in. Uh, well, this is outdated, but basically with uh, programming, uh, well, programs or or um, offerings in the technology world that are available for universities like the Google Summer of Code, one of the biggest problems, at least from what I've seen in Mexico, maybe in the rest of Latin America, there's not that many people that know this program exists. So as you partner with us, of course, it's in the best interest for you to learn the, these such programs exist and co uh, compete and participate on this. So either Google Summer of Code, Sun Community Innovation Program, and other possible uh, offerings that exist in the technology world. Um, also the benefit, uh, as a, a university, the benefit for your students, you will find that uh, they will um, have different layers in open office where they can participate either as a programmer in extensions or as a core developer or as a implementator on uh, software on top of open office, let's say like a back office or something like ODF DOM or um, ODF kit. They also, and this is one of the biggest values of why a university might want to work with us, is that they, the students will experience how to work in an open source manner, which means uh, basically working in a distributed global organization with um, real, code, real production level code being uh, worked out every day. So they will understand. And to be honest, I mean, if you are working right now in the technology field as a developer, this is the way most companies develop. I mean, they, they have a headquarters and then everybody else is working anywhere else. And usually some developer is working at their house or some of them they're working in Romania and the rest of them in the United States and, the, and a couple of offices in Philippines and and they, it does, and your team basically uh, is is uh, working around the clock. 
so open source gives you that experience already. So if they participate within the open office uh, project, they will experience that, well, how to work in that kind of environment. And they will do it before they graduate, which is something that is something that everybody uh, <coughs> wants to have. Um, so making big things from the start. So that's usually the motto, the motto for uh, working with universities. They can do production level code once they sign in with us. <laughs> you know, that's the offering. Um, I don't know how many slides are there. I think this is a little bit too many. How are we doing in time? 15 minutes, all right. Because I do want to have a conversation with a, okay, let me skip this because we might be going way tomorrow. Partnership program. Um, it's for companies that wants to, well, how we design the partnership network. Um, the open source companies find an official backup in open office. That's the first thing. Anybody that sign in with us uh, through a membership, they will have their logo and company information on a website that they can refer to a client in case, well, who's, uh, who's backing you up? But you can just go to a website, you'll see my company under the country that I'm operating. And uh, that's something that we get from the get-go. Uh, <coughs> they also start benefiting uh, Con, uh, participating with other experts, other consulting companies in different countries. That they're not competing for the same client, uh, but they have similar experience and they can share their experiences. Mm, and they also find answers for the problems, uh, something that, uh, which is the knowledge base. We can share knowledge bases and we can share, uh, gather all that knowledge from all these implementations into a but we will become a be, uh, best standards or best practices for migrators or trainers. And a distributed development. So that means if you're a company that is a, actually a developer house and you have to use open office, you have no idea of open office, well, you might want to become a partner because, well, in a par partnership network, you get access to potential developers that can work in your project. Too, so you have outsourcing networking uh, ideas or relationships. So it's open for business. The open is an open organization. It's a distribution, an interconnected presence. It's a web 2.0 for modern methodologies or techniques. And um, it's also a support, third level, entire support level for uh, develop local support in a global knowledge. Uh, how we can help, we need a top level information. We, well, it's basically, in the end, this is what open up for businesses uh, or the needs that, 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 that we're working at. We need to develop top level information. We have developers, but we need better developers <laughs> from the community. We need to uh, support our developers, uh, sometimes for pay, sometimes for free, but we need them to, to be motivated to, to research and to become really good developers. Uh, we have consulting and technical support. Uh, we need better support. We need a better how to do it network so we can provide more support to more people with doing less, <laughs> uh, we having less effort to go through. Um, and we also need to pro pro provide and produce more quality information material. These are the tasks for Open for Business that we're working on. And that's it. Uh, this is my email. My Twitter is the same, the JCA. Um, my the website is esopenoffice.org. Uh, and thanks, uh, and great having me. Yeah. Any questions? Yes, and we do. 
actually. It's not on the presentation, but we 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 sign whatever you need on the on the university if you're willing to produce uh, quality code. Um, yeah, that's something that that should be there. Yeah. Well, um, I talk a little bit about it. We're not an organization. We, we are an organization. We are an NGO. We do have a presence, an official presence, so let's say. Um, the members, though, they're spread around the world, and they have their own businesses, actually. But we are a core, so we work as a meta organization, let's say, or an umbrella organization for these small businesses and uh, and as an open office Spanish uh, NGO really. So um, also we do have uh, like so we have sometimes a little bit of confusion um, which sometimes it comes in these Q and A's and, and we don't have we don't have a, a straight answer <laughs> unfortunately. But it's like, well what happens when a partner if you're offering training, how will you expect to have trainers as a partner? Because you're competing with your partners. And that's something that usually gets thrown out of in the Q and A. Um, usually, the the answer that we have is that we want to focus on top level or larger larger organizations. So, if it's anything below 100 desktops, we're really not going to compete with uh, with small businesses. Now, if they have a larger client, uh, usually the the answer might be we'll go from either we want to help, but it's up to you if you want our help. And we might just be outsourcing one vein of the migration, since migrations take different angles. They Actually, the migration process, we have a good anatomy for it. Um, it starts with the sensibilization. Well, it actually starts with the cells. But once you start it with the project, you need to have a sensibilization period where, or has to, that's how we call it anyway, where we actually have sessions specially designed for employees, the other ones for uh, executives or directors and owners. And it's different program for each of the, each of them. And then we have a pre-training for the uh, technology offices in, in, in the organization. So they can learn how to give support, but better support. Um, then we provide a whole lot of documentation in different layers, uh, goes from cheat sheets to official documentation to to um, documentation for for um, or methodologies for having their that data on their intranet, um, have that data on print, so that every employee had different channels that they and they learn how to use uh, from the get go just in case they're stuck or they need help with something. Not everybody wants to have somebody go and sniff into their screen. Uh, and, and, and not everybody wants to read documentation. That's a given, especially when you're uh, time, cons time constrained and you need to deliver a project or a paper or document uh, within minutes. So they, we have different type of, uh, of, of, of classes of support for each uh, profile and um well that's that's I ask my own question, but <laughs> if anybody else has another one all right, great, well, thank you.